Hey, Jarek here, and I've come to a conclusion. You guys like watching me play bad games for two reasons. The first is morbid curiosity. The second is because you love seeing me in pain. So you know what, let's roll with it. I have covered a lot of bad games on this channel. Let's discuss the worst games I have ever covered. And if you're interested in any of these games I'm talking about, I'll put links down below in the video information to the full reviews. To make this video interesting, I'm not going to judge these games in an objective sense. If I did that, it would just turn into the games that crash the most, and that's kind of boring. I definitely will be taking that stuff into account, but I'm mainly looking at the second thing. How miserable was my experience while I was playing the game. How much do I never want to look at that game ever again? Also, I'm going to try to limit the amount of games that one developer can have on this list. And yes, that rule is entirely because of Cauldron. Otherwise, this would just be top 10 bad Cauldron games. This list will also be ordered. There is a very clear number one game that I hate above everything else. So we'll get to that. I'll also have a dishonorable mention for a game that just didn't live up to what they were saying they were going to do. I know there's one game that probably immediately comes to your mind when I say that, but Honestly, considering how AAA development has gone, that could be about so many different games. Now, before I get onto this list, I need to talk about Into the AM. Seriously? It hit the door frame. Good job. When I'm not pretending to be a dragon man on the internet, I unfortunately have to wear clothes. Hey, hey, you. Huh? You're, you're the idiot that missed me with the Nerf gun. Thankfully, Into the AM has me covered. Their clothes are high quality, they stretch, they do not rip, and they look good. I don't care if they get messy or dirty, I'll throw them on the wash and they'll be just as soft when I take them out. I have a lot of gaming shirts, but I would never wear any of those while mountain biking. I'm not sure they could do the same. And of course, Into the AM has their standard deals. You can get three graphic tees for 60 or three basic tees for 45. And if you go to intotheam.com slash dragon shirts, you can get 10% off site wide. And this does stack on top of the deals. So huge thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about these bad games. At number 10, Crossfire X. Crossfire was one of the biggest multiplayer shooters in Asia. So Microsoft, in their wisdom, decided to buy it, make a sequel with an awful Call of Duty style campaign, a horribly pay to win multiplayer, and turn it to an Xbox exclusive. You know, the one console that does significantly worse than the others in Asia. Why would you ever do that? Crossfire X released almost one year ago to this day. And they're already shutting it down. They have announced that the Xbox exclusive shooter will shut down on the 18th of May, 2023. This also includes the game's campaign. Games as a service, everybody. What the fuck? Next up is Rogue Warrior. Yeah, this one isn't too much of a surprise. The gameplay itself is pretty mediocre. It's just a regular cover shooter. If it didn't crash nonstop, I wouldn't have a whole lot to say about it. But that's not why you know about this game. You know about this game because it focuses on Richard Marcinko, who was voiced by Mickey Rourke. And these voice lines are peak humor for seventh grade boys. It's almost a so bad it's good kind of thing. Suck my balls, my hairy fucking big balls. Wrap them around your mouth. Uh, game froze, by the way, as he's saying that. At number eight, I wanted to put Turning Point Fall of Liberty just because it's a notoriously bad game. But honestly, it's bad on the tech side. Gameplay wise, it's just extremely mediocre. So I wasn't miserable playing it, but I didn't enjoy it. Instead, I'll put Hour of Victory here. This game was voted as the worst game of 2007. It's got a bad frame rate. It's got a terrible FOV. It's got incredibly bland, repetitive gameplay and some of the most hilariously bad cutscenes I have ever seen. Oh, Idiot. What is this cutscene? Brazilian Root. I can sum up this game in two words. Brazilian jank. Animations are taken straight from Crisis, and if they aren't, they look like this. That also just so happens to line up with how good the cutscenes look. Look at that amazing CG. Why use CG? Why not just use the in-game graphics? <laughs> that was like early 2000s CG. Soldier of Fortune Payback. Oh look, a cauldron game. Soldier of Fortune was known for its gunplay and unique gore system. Yeah, well, Payback has none of that. It instead has this. Aldine and the Moor. 
are meeting not far from here, just beyond the entrance of these very caves. Thanks. You, you're going to let me live? Weak American. Were our situation reversed, I would not hesitate to put a bullet in your head. Good point. Exodus of the Earth. This is one of those games. It just drags on and on, fighting the same incredibly stupid AI for the entire duration of the game. I got you! Do you, though? The one time they try to mix it up, it's with the vehicle section that drags on for hours, and you literally softlock the game if you flip it over. It's not difficult to flip over either. Call of Juarez, the cartel. What happened here? Call of Juarez was a respectable franchise. The previous games had great stories, lovingly crafted with tons of polish. They're almost hidden gem. I think they're a little too well known to be called hidden gems, but they're close. I really liked them. Well, the cartel has none of that polish. Bad PC port, bad console releases, bad animations, bad story, and laughably bad cutscenes. Look up at the sky, Juan. Chingada madre! Get to cover! Hunt down the Freeman. This thing again. I'm tired of talking about this one. I'll just say I'm surprised Valve hasn't taken this thing off Steam considering it somehow got attached to their Half-Life franchise. I do not have remotely close to enough time to explain why this game is so bad, so I'd recommend watching the full video if you want to know more. You fucked up my face. The 13 remake. They took a cult classic and turned it into this. What the f What happened? What's going on? <laughs> First of all, where did this person come from? Secondly, what happened to them? Uh... It looks like something out of the thing. Look at this water, like, what the heck? Jesus Christ. Nothing you can do. <laughs> that was so bad. Oh my, I feel my frame rate taking. Where did the other magazine come from? What's with the, oh, hold on. First of all, where does the other magazine come from? It just materializes? Secondly, audio, what? <laughs> then I would rather just play the earlier Quake games. <laughs> Why was she a man suddenly? What the? What is going on with her legs? <laughs> Look at her face. Where did that guy come from? I... What the... Uh... Alright, hold on. I gotta get a look at this guy. What the f*** is going on to the- What's happening with his face? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my! Oh, I destroyed him too hard. Oh! <laughs> huh? Oh! <laughs> and before we get to the worst game on this channel, let's have a dishonorable mention. Halo Infinite. 
Now, in the title, I actually called this game Game of the Year. That wasn't because Halo Infinite was the best shooter I had ever played, it was because 2021 was pretty dry, at least for the style of games that I enjoy playing. I do still think the campaign is decent, it's good, it's probably the best campaign 343 has made. Where the problems arise is the multiplayer. In that video, I said this. Anyway, as you can probably figure out, the multiplayer has an amazing base, but a lot of really weird decisions around it, and a lot of problems that need to be worked out. Like I said, this will probably play out like Halo 5, where six months down the line or so, it'll be an amazing experience. But as of right now, I don't, I'm kind of just waiting for some quality of life improvements. Yet, here we are, a year later, and Halo Infinite has less content than Halo 5 did a couple of months after launch. The reason I assumed Halo Infinite would shape up is because Halo 5 did. Halo 5 had a really strong base, but it was lacking in content, and it focused a bit too much on competitive Halo. But in just a few months, it had gotten Forge Mode, it had gotten a bunch of new maps, it got so much content, more than we ever saw in any other Halo game. Halo 5's multiplayer is the one thing that 343 actually got right. It was the one thing they made with an actual direction and focus. So what happened? How did they not bring that into Halo Infinite? Why does this game still have so many connection issues? Why do I still die around so many walls? Why is there no content in this game? Infinite had so much promise. The multiplayer looked to bring Halo back to the mainstream, and 343 messed it up. And speaking of messing it up, let's go to number one. The game I hate above everything else. The game I never want to play again. Chaser. Chaser is not objectively the worst game on this list, but it is by far the game that I hate the most. I never want to even look at this game. It drags on for 16 hours. The same repetitive gameplay against the same enemies non-stop. The few times they try to mix it up, it's with forced instant fail stealth missions because you know I love those. In some defense, they had big ambitions with the story, but the result is... Well, too bad you couldn't get Stone, too. Stone. He was on Majestic. In addition to the cloning facility, he's also built a dark eye. Dark eye? It's bad. To make things even worse, that repetitive combat is also an absolute slog. Enemies do absurd amounts of damage to you seemingly at random. So you're forced to play this game like a slow-paced cover shooter without cover shooter mechanics. This slow pace with repetitive gameplay turns it into torture. You keep thinking the game is going to end, and then the next level starts. Little do you know, you still have 10 hours to go. Again, it's not objectively the worst game. It doesn't crash every five seconds or anything like that. But my actual gaming experience left me so annoyed and impatient that I never want to look at this ever again. And those are the worst games I have ever covered on this channel. If you want to watch the original full reviews or know about any more of these games, links down below in the video information to the full videos. Huge thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Again, go to intotheam.com slash dragonshirts to get 10% off site-wide, which stacks on top of the deals. Huge thanks to all you for watching these videos and for joining me on Twitch. You can click in the bottom right to go follow my Twitch if you want to do that. Subscribers get to see my videos a week early. Same with YouTube channel members. And if you want to go follow me on Twitter, my Twitter tag is down there in the bottom left if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.